Afternoons with Christine Layton, 12.30 till 3.30 on ABC Radio Perth and WA. So tell me, have you ever crashed into a traffic light pole at an intersection, at a pedestrian crossing? What happened? 0437 922 720. It turns out that Australians pay close to $90 million a year in damage and injuries from collisions with these traffic light poles. They're generally quite rigid, and that is to protect the wiring inside. But a team from the University of South Australia has come up with a flexible traffic light pole, one that will absorb the impact of a crash and maintain shape, preventing other cars or pedestrians being hit too. Uh, Using existing technology from frangible street light poles and bollards, they've come up with a winning combination that could save lives. Dr Muhammad Yudin is is a senior lecturer from the University of South Australia and the project lead. Good afternoon, Dr Yudin. Uh, good, uh, Good afternoon. Hello. Thank you for coming on. Now, this is a brilliant idea. Who came up with it? Uh, okay, I think uh, this uh, project is um, I mean, the collaborative project with um, industry partner, um, which is uh, Impact Absorbing System based in South Australia. And uh, the project is funded uh, by both industry partner and uh, IMCRC. So it is uh, the the project is basically the extension of uh, energy absorbing bollard concept being already used successfully uh, in the in the market. I mean the, you can see the energy absorbing bollard uh, around uh, different cities in Australia. So the concept is developed by the industry partner. So this project, which is energy absorbing traffic light, is an extension of the energy absorbing bollard concept. Wow, you know, uh, I have to I have to admit that I spent last night on Twitter. There is an account called the World Bollard Association. It has countless videos of bollards and how they're able to stop cars in their tracks, um, and it's just it's remarkable. I had no idea they were so powerful, and then this story should come up. So let's say a car runs straight into one of your poles. What would happen? What would we see? So. <clears throat> So with the with the proposed um, the energy absorbing uh, traffic light uh, system uh, we are developing here. So when a car is going to hit the traffic uh, light, um, um, so the the traffic light our proposed traffic light um, has got a specially designed uh, crumbling zone, uh, which should be installed underneath the traffic pole. So when the car is going to hit, so that the impact energy would be absorbed by the traffic pole itself and as a result the traffic pole would remain um, upright uh, with, a, with, a, with a very little uh, tilt or minor deformation and at the same time the, the traffic lights which is LED lights would be operational and it is also going to stop the car the, the, the going over the pole and saving the lives of the pedestrian waiting at the intersection. Wow. And also the saving the lives of the motorist and the vehicle lock offense. Yeah, right. So I mean, the fact that the yeah the the lanterns, the the three coloured lanterns and the black box yeah. on top of the pole would remain upright and operational is remarkable. So how did you test this? Uh, what kind of speeds can these poles endure? Yeah. So we already have um, done a number of uh, tests in in lab, uh, which is basically pretty much uh, the. The real life test. So we have got a vehicle actually hitting the hitting the traffic pole, and then um, so we have done a few tests with um, uh, 50 to 60 kilometer hour a car is hitting the traffic pole, and uh, from our preliminary test we found that our proposed traffic pole actually can absorb the impact energy, and um, and also it can remain uh, upright uh, with a very little tilt. And of course, it can stop the car as well. Yeah, wow. So, so what, we are, what happens after 60 kilometers per hour? What happens to okay. the traffic pole then? So, if of course, um, so this is something we are working on uh, really to um, to improve and optimize our uh, the crumpling zone, which is the core of this technology. So, we are working out um, uh, designing of the the crumpling zone for a higher speed. Let's say when the car is going to hit maybe 70, 80. Um, speed hitting the the traffic pole and then how it's going to actually resist or absorb the energy. So we are actually working out and this project is about basically optimizing 
um, uh, the the crumbling zone of the traffic pole um, uh, for a range of uh, speed yep. of the car. And that, look, it's certainly a great start. Nearly 20 minutes past three. If you've just tuned in, Dr Mohamed Yudin is my guest. He's a senior lecturer from the University of South Australia and project lead on these traffic light poles which absorb the impact of a crash. So how much do they cost in comparison to the to the current traffic light poles? Um, I think uh, uh, at this moment we don't have any exact figure of the how much it's going to cost, but... Um, our proposed uh, uh, traffic light system is going to give a number of benefits. So I guess um, the the cost um, is going to save the cost for repair or replacement um, of the damaged traffic lights, the current traffic lights, which is cost around ten to twenty thousand right. dollars. Um, so that would be saved by our proposed um, uh, traffic light system. And uh, secondly. Of course, uh, the things, uh, the, the, the out of the control car could be arrested out. So as a result, the fatalities and injuries would be nearly prevented, saving millions of dollars incurred by local authorities. Right. And third, thirdly, I guess uh, our proposed uh, traffic lights can replace existing ones uh, with minimal service cost and also will be the default traffic lights for future new installations. Right, so reduction in, in costs in terms of repairing uh, the traffic signals and then reduction in costs in terms of other accidents, uh, be it that's people, right. infrastructure or vehicles. That's right. Yep. So how long do they take to make? How does it work, Mohammed? Are they Australian made? Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, this is the, the because, as I said, the, the project is partnered with the Australian, South Australian uh, industry uh, and we are uh, the, uh, the product will be made uh, in South Australia here, um, in the, uh, within the, in the site of the company. And, of course, um, the, the, it's, uh, I guess we are at this moment doing a number of tests and really understand the, the behaviour and the formation of the crumpling zone and the traffic light poles. And uh, so we are expecting to really end up this year, we will have a very successfully tested proof of concept and have a lineup of the manufacturing protocol, yeah, wow. so making sure that making sure that uh, regulatory standards are met uh, for commercialization. So in in 2023, uh, we are expected uh, uh, expect to expect the product to go for production and seek for market opportunity and sales in local states first, yeah. especially in South South Australia, and then of course gradually it will be promoted across other states and and worldwide. Yeah, right. It'd be good to see them rolled out to the states. Have you had a conversation with Main Roads WA yet, Mohammed? Um, no, not yet. Or anyone from WA, but uh, we have got a partner from uh, Department of uh, Infrastructure and uh, Transport in South Australia. So the uh, people from the DIT are on board uh, in this project. So uh, basically. Uh, they would be the first uh, client and user of our product to be rolled out into the into the intersection around the city. Yes, wow. Well, um, I spent 10 years working at Main Road, so I, I'll admit that I did send this story on to my brother who's currently a traffic engineer in the Road Network Operations Centre and he was pretty impressed, so that's a that's a good sign. And look, over here we have over a 1,000 traffic signals. Some intersections have, you know, more than 10 poles. That's a lot of infrastructure to update. So um, how exactly would, would, would states go about this? Would they just replace yeah. them as the poles need upgrading? So... Okay, so I guess um, th- there are a number of uh, different types of uh, traffic poles uh, probably you'll see um, at the in- intersection. Some of the traffic poles are quite big, and uh, those are called super poles. And you can see the, all these LED lights. And But there are also uh, the small uh, traffic lights. You can see small pole, not, not very high. So we, we are actually at this moment targeting really to replace um, or new installation for those uh, small traffic poles, which are basically nothing else but a hollow tube, metal tube. And they actually generally crumple and collapse onto the roads under the impact of any car. So we are basically at this moment um, uh, looking at how we can actually replace those um, uh, the like a, uh, small traffic uh, lights. And then gradually we have to look into uh, perhaps how it can actually go into the bigger traffic uh, lights. But of course, the it? yeah change. Of course, the bigger super poles um, we don't have to replace because they are still quite um, heavy and rigid. However, when a car is going to hit to the super pole, 
the, all the impact is being actually get into the, the car and there is a severe fatality into the vehicle uh, drivers and occupants. So this is also not a very good sign. Yeah. So, look, all going well, could they save lives, Mohammed? Yes, I think that, that is what actually the one of the goal of this project. Uh, um, uh, it's not about uh, saving the like um, infrastructure. Uh, like the cost in infrastructure. I think the one of the goal is to, at the same time to saving the lives of the uh, the vehicle occupant as well as the pedestrian. So, as you know that. Um, our current intersection design actually forced the pedestrian to stand and wait next to the traffic force for road crossing. Yeah. So this is how we actually design our intersection. But this is not this is actually not good because the people are crossing the road and waiting at the intersection. And when you have a very simple traffic poles next to it and someone is waiting, a car is hitting the traffic pole and collapsing and then basically killing the pedestrian next to it. So we basically our proposed traffic pool system is going to actually save the lives of those pedestrians. And of course, because it's going to save, uh, take some of the impact energy by the traffic pole so that the, the car will get the less impact. Yeah, and so the car will stop the... as opposed to following on and, and hitting someone behind the pole or even hitting another car, for example. That's right. Yeah, you're exactly right. So, yeah. so that's the main main uh, the objective of this uh, technology. Yeah. Look, I'm I'm really excited by it as a as a traffic nerd. Um, I think it's brilliant, and I really uh, want to keep in touch with you and just see how it all goes, Mohammed. So, look, thank you so much for coming on to explain it to us, and and shall we keep in touch and and see when it's all all ready to be rolled out. Yeah, I think uh, definitely. I think uh, it'll be good to really um, uh, to actually uh, promote this technology across. So I think end of this year, uh, end of next year, uh, we actually hope to really have a uh, very successful um, uh, prototype uh, of this technology and who should be pretty much ready to go for marketing. Yeah, wonderful. We'll, we'll keep in touch. Uh, Dr. Yudin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Dr. Mohamed Yudin, he is a senior lecturer at the University of South Australia. Project lead for these traffic light poles, which have a crumple zone, they absorb the impact of a crash, maintain shape, they don't drop down onto the car or let a car go through and kill someone else. So look, I think it's really exciting and I'll keep an eye on it and I will let you know.